Hello, uh, everybody. A simple video here today. I wanted to demonstrate how to patch the DLLs for the Windows 10 start screen patch. Um, basically brings back the start screen that was seen in Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. And is still accessible to some versions of Windows 10, which is why I'm creating this video to possibly get people to try this patch manually to mainly patch the two DLLs we'll be patching in this video to see which exact versions really accept this homemade patch that we're doing. So I have IDA downloaded here. Uh, this is the free version. And I also have this reg file here, which is from the original author of this patch. I will leave this in the description as just a regular old uh, text file on whatever the fuck that one website's called that just hosts text files. Just copy the text and save it as a .reg file. And uh, once you have it saved, you'll just double click on it and click on yes. Run the reg file and say yes. And uh, we can now begin the patching ceremony. And as you can see, the start menu on regular Windows 10 still works, so uh, this reg file doesn't do anything only until we put the patch DLLs in. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up File Explorer. I'm going to create, I created a root folder for our DLLs that will be moving into Windows System 32. Uh, so we're going to be copying some DLLs from System 32. So I'm going to load another window of File Explorer. I'll go into my C drive. Windows, search up System32, which is all the way down here. I'm just typing in the name of the folder and it just directly goes to it. It's such a nice feature in File Explorer. I really do enjoy it. I'll type in shell and we'll get shell32. This is one of the DLLs we'll need. So I'll just control C, control V, copy and paste it. We also need TWI, NUI, this one right here copy this DLL, paste it into our DLLs folder. I'm going to close this tab with System32 and now we can load these files up with IDA. You could either drag it onto the desktop shortcut you have here or load up IDA, click on new, find the folder with our DLLs that we just copied over to the root of our C drive. And we'll start off with shell 32 first. Choose the first option here, which is portable executable. Click on OK. And right now, IDA is searching for a DLL that comes with the Visual Studio Code distributables from 2015, I believe. You do not need to find this file if you don't have it. Uh, you can literally just click on cancel. I, I click on cancel and it'll just load up. It'll also ask you to download an extra thing. If it does, click on confirm or click on yes. And uh, once it is done compiling, you'll now get a bunch of shit on your screen. Now, for people that haven't used IDA before, IDA before like me, this looks very confusing. But what we're doing is very simple and it'll literally just take a few minutes and we'll be out of here in no time. Once IDEA has compiled the DLL, go ahead and go into the window tab here. And we can see this large list of windows. We'll go ahead and go into functions. Now from here, the functions window has been selected. I'm going to go into search and we type in search. And from here, we can type in a string. Now the string that we need to find is this long string, which is start menu enabled. I'm not gonna fucking say the shit in the front because I'm too damn lazy. So we'll click on okay. And as you can see here on the very top, the functions window has selected the string or we're currently trying to find a function, but it's under this string in the window. So we'll just double click on it and we'll be brought on our main window here on the very right, 
we will be brought to the function that we were trying to find. So as you can see here, that's the same function. I'm going to go into Edit, Patch Program, and Assemble. I'm going to press Backspace because we're going to add in our own instruction. We're going to do XOR. We're going to basically disable a couple things here. We're going to disable EAX, and we're going to type in comma space EAX, or so. That's what I believe it does for my quick Google search. We're going to click on OK once we typed in this exact instruction here. And then for the very last one, we will type in RET. We'll click on OK. And we get close out of this window here. Go back into Edit. Oh, what the hell? IDA. Let me do my shit, all right? Calm down. Dude, what is it doing? Let it do its thing for a little bit. Then go into Patch Program, Apply Patches to Input File. And then from here, it's basically going to save the changes that we did to the DLL. Uh, if you want to, you could create a backup, but we technically already have a backup in System32, so I'm not going to do it because I'm just a baller. Click on OK. And then from here, we can open up the next DLL when we need to patch, do the same procedure to it. Click on Open. We will pack the database to basically save the project in IDA uh, project format, whatever you want to call it. Click on OK. Then we go into TWI. I have already opened up the this DLL in IDA, which is why it's asking me to load it up. I will override and we'll load it up in the same portable executable. Uh, ignore the DLL. We're going to go back into window. We can just do Alt-1 to go into the functions window here. Once we're in the functions window, we could do Alt-T. Search for the same string. I'll find it right there. Click on OK. Once it's found the string, double click. And now we are at, oh, there it is, the function right there. Edit, patch program, assemble. And we'll type in the same instructions as before. Do R and R, R E T. Put that in. And then we can close out of this. And you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna apply the patches and click on OK. And now we can finally close out of IDA, save the project file. And here comes the fun part. We're gonna actually load these DLLs into Windows. Double check to make sure that you've loaded up the reg file from before, because once you do the DLL patches, you won't be able to open up the start menu anymore if you haven't loaded in the reg file or the or the start screen since we're technically loading in the DLLs for the start screen. So I'm going to press the Windows key or you could go into control Alt delete. But since I'm in a VM, I don't really want to do that because I do that on my main system. I'll go over to the power option and I'll hold down shift and I'll click on restart. <laughs> Ignore that. That's just Windows being stupid. It's just some stupid shit probably running in the background. Still holding down shift, by the way. All right, here we are. All right, so once we get the choose the option window here, you could just you stop holding down shift. You don't have to hold down shift anymore. Sticky keys will not kill you. Go into troubleshoot, advanced, command prompt. Now our computer will reload and we'll get to command prompt. Wow, that's amazing. It's almost like the it's almost like that's what we clicked on. Log into our user account. I don't have a password, so I don't put anything in. And now we're in CMD. All right, here we go. So if you have multiple drives, you're probably gonna have to be going through a bunch of drive letters to actually find your Windows drive letter. But since I'm running on a VM with one drive, I just went into C colon, and I'm now in my Windows directly. As you can see here, we got our DLL files over here. So we're gonna type in CD DLLs to go into that folder. And I'll type in dir just to make sure that all of our files are there. And as you can see, we got our 
DLLs or patch ones that we made. And we also have the project files here. So now let's go into CD. We'll type in CD forward slash, or I believe that's forward slash. I might be mistaken. Windows forward slash system32. And now we are in the system32 folder. So from here, we are going to rename the target DLLs that we have here in our DLLs folder on the root of our drive. So to do that, we don't want to delete the DLLs and we don't want to overwrite them because if something bad were to happen, we kind of want those files back. We don't want to reinstall Windows. That would be a pain in the ass. Trust me, I've done it a billion times. So we're going to type in R-E-N, which is the rename command in command prompt. Type in shell32.dll and then from here, Type in shell32.dll, but we'll also add a dot old. So now the main file extension of the original shell32.dll is now shell32.old. So it's not a DLL file, it's a dot old file now because it's old. We'll do the same thing for TWI, for the TWI DLL, and we'll change it to have the dot old extension as well. Now from here, we can finally copy our patch DLLs into system32. So to do that, we're going to type in the copy command and we'll type in space. We'll also do the front forward, the front slash, what the stupid slash. Sorry about that. I may have had a little heart attack. Type in forward slash DLLs. So now we're pulling off of the root of our drive, as you can see here, because if I type in DL and then tab, it knows that the folder is there because we're reading off of the root of our C drive. And we could type in shell. I just pressed in tab. I, I just did she because it shell starts with she and I typed in tab and we'll do space dot and then press enter. Now we've copied the patch DLL. Yay. Now we have to do it for the other one. I'll just push the up arrow on my keyboard, hold down an escape for a bit until we hit here on the commands and we'll type in TWI and we'll add the space dot at the end of the command as well as well as well <laughs> clicking everywhere on my computer man it's screwing up the, it's screwing up the command prompt now that we've copied the two dll's the two patch dll's and we also have the old dll's as you can see here i typed in dir and i typed in the uh old file the old dll that we renamed the older DLL too, we could go and exit out of command prompt, just type in exit or click on the X button at the top. And we could click on continue and uh, exit and continue into Windows 10, basically reboot our system. I don't know what it is, but when I'm listening to music on VMware, uh, it might be a Hyper-V thing, but um, my music gets disordered when I'm booting up a VM. And look at that, we got the start screen. Yay, we did the patch ourselves. Look at that. It works like a charm. Wait a minute. I feel like there was something called charms menu back in Windows 8. Hmm, I wonder if there's a GitHub project maybe recreating that. Anyways, I'm getting caught up a bit. We got the start screen back, baby. As you can see here, it works exactly like as you would expect it. Broken right click buttons. I'm gonna go back on top of here. We can't pin anything. If we click on the bottom here, we got a broken settings tab here because there's no settings AppX file, um, which I'm currently trying to figure out. And here we can also try to change our account profile picture, but hey, that just loads up the regular settings menu. Okay, that, that works. Um, but the question is, why doesn't this type of menu show up in here? probably some more DLLs that we need to patch or need to add in, but it should be similar when we right click as this pop-up, which is very strange. I don't know 
I have no idea why, but our power buttons work and our search works as well. So that will be it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any questions or need help with anything, I will be sure to be in the comments and to help out as many people as possible because I am also a beginner when it comes to patching DLLs, quote unquote. So uh, yeah, uh, I am now going to open up the step recorder and I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did, but do it in, what is that? Oh God, I forgot we're running the first version of Windows, this fucking thing.